Dave Manichetti here with live and our guest with an interview with Blue Smooth Radio. Dave, welcome in our show. Thank you. Nice to be here. We are performing tonight with Y&T in uh, Uden in the Pool. That means you have uh, yesterday made uh, played in uh, Harlem. How was it on stage there? Oh, it was very good, actually. I, it was the first time we've been in that particular venue, and uh, I thought it was a, a really nice venue, actually. Yeah, yeah, very, very well put together. Good crowd. Yeah, it's a great show. I liked it. I told you uh, before, um, originally we have a blues program, uh, but we're, uh, well, giving all people who, who pick a guitar a chance to let them play on the radio. But your CD was the first one that triggered us to Y&T, and that's on the blues side. You made a blues CD, and before we go to Y&T, um, I read in your bio that you, s you say you wanted to make a, a CD was back to the bass, and blues is... Accordingly to you, the base of all rock and roll music. Well, I, I think it has a lot to do with it. Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, even you know when you listen to the first Led Zeppelin record, I mean that's that's pretty much all blues based. You know, if you think about it, and um, not that Led Zeppelin is all rock and roll music, but I, it, you know what I mean. It's it, you know it's it, it comes from that standard one four five progression and the uh, and that type of sort of emotional connection to uh, to the playing. Uh, for me, there's a lot to it. But um, also from my past uh, was something that I always listened to a lot when I was growing up uh, and, and starting to play guitar for the first time. So, uh, and, and a friend of mine was also a major, major blues guy. And he, I mean, you know, fan of blues music. And, and he had all kinds of different artists that I'd never heard of before. And he used to play all kinds of stuff for me. And uh, I've forgotten most of the names of the people that he used to play, but it was... Uh, it was all influential for me. I, I, I love that style of music because the blues is, is just based on, you know, emotion. I mean, it's just straightforward emotion. That's, that's what it's all about, you know, whether you're down and out or a loved one or whatever, the, the, whatever it is you're looking for. It's all based on, oh, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, and that's the kind of playing that I love. I, I love emotional, passionate kind of playing and singing and stuff like that. So it was just... You know, something that I, I guess I had in me that I wanted to get out. And uh, when Y&T broke up for a short period of time there, that was, it was a time to do something. me is the emotion in the guitar it's not just blues bass but you put that hard rock yeah. guitar sound in and so that's as a song like my favorite loan me a dime yeah. uh, originally boss Gex, if i'm not mistaken and it's an all new song yeah With that sound. yeah uh I, you know at first i i didn't think too much about what it was i was going to get tone wise on my guitar i i just knew that the kinds of songs what i was looking for and um and as it turned out, I, I got a couple of different sounds that I've been used to playing, certainly in Y&T, uh, some, some that were cleaner and stuff. But on, on that particular song, it was more of a, a grungier kind of sound to, to, to the lead tone. And uh, it just worked out. I don't know. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I can't call myself a traditional blues player. I'm, I'm certainly not by any means. But, um, you know, I love the feel of it. And, and to me, that was how I could sort of combine where, where I came from doing rock and roll and, and, uh, and doing something that I've always appreciated so much of. In fact, I loved that song when I was, uh, when I was younger and I was just getting into playing guitar. I, I remember seeing Boz Skaggs play it live on, uh, on TV, I saw it, and, and I was you know, immediately struck by it. And, and one of my favorite guitar players was uh, Dwayne Allman, as a matter of fact, and, and uh, you know, he had that kind of thing too, you know, or it was, it was all blues-based kind of guitar playing and, and riffing and stuff, and so I, 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 had, I had all that in me, so I, I knew it was eventually going to come out <laughs> in one state or another, whether it be kind of rocking blues or whatever. Yeah. <laughs>
most obvious question for me is this that Nardless CD coming up with the blues uh, or is all your uh, attention um, on Y&T at this moment? Well, it has been all Y&T for quite a few years now. Uh, that particular blues record that I put out was 1997, I think. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did release a second record, Menachetti, and uh, it was less bluesy. Yeah, it was more rock, and, 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 but, but it's sort of still a combination of something there. But um, yeah, and uh, again, it's, it's been a long time since I've had enough, enough time to put attention to it. But as we were writing for this new Y&T record, uh, I actually wrote uh, two new blues songs. And, uh, and I wasn't intending to, but that's just kind of part of the style of, of my songwriting, along with the, the, the heavy rock stuff. And um, the guys loved the songs so, so much they wanted to put them on the record. And I said, no, nah, we can't do it, man. Can't do it. It's not right for Y&T. It's not right for Y&T. I want it for my solo record. <laughs> well, are we going to wait for that? Face Melter, you, 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 you mentioned it, it's the new album, and well, you, you took a couple of years off with Y&T, but you, you picked up where you left with the album. Yeah, I mean, we were actually quite uh, honestly surprised at how easy it was to get back into the hang of, of, of you know, writing Y&T songs again. I mean, we, we haven't done it since 90, 96, I guess, 95, something like that. And, um, and at that time, it was a little bit different for us because in 90, 93 and 95, when we, when we recorded two independent records for Y&T, it was a very frustrating time. So we were kind of writing based on frustration versus, you know, just getting out our heart and soul kind of thing um, in, in a happier way, you know, in a more, you know, more, you know, feeling confident way, you know. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, it was just something that Phil and I were a little concerned about at first, you know, God, I hope we've still got it in us, you know, to, to, to come up with the goods, you know, and it's not going to sound forced. And almost within two weeks of starting to write for the record, it just, some great stuff started coming out, and then the ideas just started flowing, just like in the past. So it was good. It, it came together quite well. <laughs> The frustration you mentioned, um, was that because you could have been bigger with Y&T, but you, you finally came to peace, the place you have in the rock and roll history? Well, I mean, I, I think that's, that's part of it. But uh, realistically, it was because the 90s were a bad time for, for our style of music. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it was a very strange thing for me because whenever, you know, I mean, we've, we've played through the 70s and the early 80s and the mid 80s and the 90s and so on and so forth and there have been so many trends there have been different styles of rock music that have come up along the way punk and you know new wave and everything you can imagine right right and um, along with those new styles also stays the same music that's been there but in the 90s everything was like throw everything else out that had came before us Nothing else is good except this music. And, uh, you know, certainly the fans were still into our music, but, you know, the music industry had gone sort of that way. It was like, oh, you guys played in the 80s and the 70s? Ah, we don't want to hear from you. You know, it's got to be 90s now. You know, so it was just a, it was a tough time to find gigs, 
to uh, to tour at any place and to find record companies that were interested and and radio or anyone else. So it was kind of like ten years of dark ages. You know, maybe it was even more than that. It might have been twelve years, the end of the '80s and into the beginning of 2000s. So. Um, yeah, it was a frustrating time. So that's kind of where the frustration of came from for the uh, for the songwriting, and and indeed it was reflected in the titles of the record, which was musically incorrect. In other words, saying that we are now musically incorrect in the in the time that we are at, and um, you know, endangered species was the second one, which is how we felt like we were an endangered species, and um, and so you know we wrote from a completely, you know frustrated and angry kind of way and and it came out different you know i think they were still really good records but uh different from the traditional y and t sound i think I don't know if you see the Anvil uh, documentary about the, the other yes. band. Yeah. You can completely relate to those two guys yeah. if you've seen the documentary. Yes, I did, and 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 you know, I mean, I felt for those guys because I mean, we'd been through that, and um, you know, it's a it's a hard road to go that way. And you know, I mean, luckily, you know, we kind of got past that and 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 moved on. But uh, um, what was fun too was was you know seeing them work through it and everything. But um, but at the same time, you know, as a musician, it was a difficult movie for me to watch because it, it was so much based in reality that everybody has gone through at one point in their career, you know. And, uh, and you know, it was, it was just one of those things that was kind of like a bittersweet movie for me. It was like, good for them. They're getting the, the, the you know, the recognition that they've always deserved. But... Wow! Look what they've been, what they've been through and what they're doing. You know, that's it's it's frustrating as a musician to see stuff like that. Um. <laughs> 